Hi everyone, and welcome to our webinar about our Big Ideas Fund. Um, I can see some people are still joining, so um, hopefully um, you know, we'll catch up if you're just hearing us start now. I'd like to start by introducing myself. I'm Sally Ely, and I'm the director of the City and Guilds Foundation, which looks after this area of our work. City and Guilds purpose is all about supporting people get into a job, helping them on that job, and into the next job. And the work that we do in the foundation really supports those who are furthest from the marketplace get into a job. We've long been associated with supporting education in prisons, but this work that we're doing around the fund is looking much more closely connected to supporting people um, get into work, not just get um, skills for work. So the whole idea of our webinar here is to answer any, is to take you through um, the process for applying for the Big Ideas Fund and talk to you about the criteria for it and then answer any questions that you might have. And I'm joined here by a number of my colleagues who work in different areas um, who can hopefully help answer your questions. I'd like to give a shout out to Kevin Wilkinson who is our um, Business Development Manager uh, at City and Guild Group and a lot of you will know him already and he, he works full time in this area so he will be able to answer any questions that you have that might be around other work that we have in this area. So um, that's the format of how we're going to do it. If there's anything that we don't cover today then please answer, write your question in the right hand um, bar on the screen and that will show up and then we will come to it after we've gone through the main presentation parts. And then anything not covered, please do get in touch with us. And we we're very happy to have a separate conversation with you. So if I can now um, pass over to my colleague, Mark, we can talk to you about, you know, a bit more about the mission of the fund and, and what, where to go from there. Thank you, Sally. Uh, so the current slide hopefully showing on all of your screens is the, uh, the mission, which is uh, visible on the website. But just to recap, uh, the fund and indeed the commission is seeking uh, to identify and activate practical ways for offenders to build skills and get a job. Um, that's the uh, that's the main priority, and as Sally touched upon, it is really about uh, getting a job. The timeline also is visible on the website, but I thought I'd talk you through the process. As you'll hopefully know, um, expressions of interest are currently open. Uh, they remain open. To the 24th of January uh, at midday, which is next Friday. There's a process then of, uh, of assessment, uh, and those that are successful will be invited to submit a application to the second round the following week, which uh, is the week commencing the 27th. There will then be a process of assessment uh, with the commissioners, and Steve will touch a bit more on who they are and how that process works. Uh, in March, uh, with the grants being announced on the 21st of April. So in terms of the criteria for the, uh, for the fund, they're fairly straightforward, uh, but I'll run you through them. Uh, the Big Idea Fund is only able to accept applications from UK registered charities, community interest companies, social enterprises, prison governors, or other non-for-profit organisations. Uh, such organisations uh, that are seeking work for uh, seeking funding for work that's already delivered in prisons, or for those who've been recently released. So that includes uh, through the gate uh, support uh, and those that are in the community. The fund is not able to support for-profit businesses, uh, or equally organisations where observance of a particular faith is a prerequisite for support from that organisation, or who have a sort of stated objective that relates to evangelizing for a particular faith. It's also unable to support applications which relate to existing core activities, so replacement funding, applications that uh, relate solely to research, although if there is an element of research that's related to the program that you feel as an organization uh, will help build the uh, case for its support in the future, that is uh, an acceptable element. Repayments of loans, projects which have already been delivered, projects which are unable to evidence their impact uh, reporting against the City and Guilds impact uh, evaluation framework, 
uh, and we'll touch a bit about that later. Um, and it's worth noting the commissions have focused on really on this point at the bottom, which is the need and the social impact um, and potential for future scale. So the website contains information on how to apply. The first stage, as I mentioned, is the expression of interest. This is a relatively short form. Uh, it shouldn't take too long to fill out. The deadline, as I touched upon earlier, is next Friday at midday. Uh, and hopefully you'll all re already had a little play with it. But if you have any uh, questions about the uh, application form itself or the expression of interest, uh, do uh, write them on the right and we can uh, address them later. So I'm going to hand over to Steve, who's going to talk a bit about the focus of the fund. Thanks, Mark. So firstly, I'm just going to talk quickly about our Future Skills Commissioners. Hopefully you can see a slide containing um, a brief biography of the seven commissioners. We're very pleased, delighted in fact, to have secured such a stellar group of individuals. All of them have a broad and significant knowledge and interest in this space, and I'm sure some of them will be known to you and to your organisations. Um, starting at the top left, Dame Sally Coates, I mean, aside to her current role in the education sector, obviously she published an important study back in 2016, Unlocking Potential, which um, is a significant review into prison education. Um, Junior Smart um, was recently recognised in the Queen's Birthday Honours List with an OBE for his work in tackling gang violence and uh, plays an important role as the brains behind the SOS Gangs Project at St Giles Trust. Um, Ian Vickers, both Deputy Director of Education, Employment and Industries with HMPPS, but also himself a respected prison governor within Wandsworth for many years, um, a huge level of experience within the prison um, state. Simon Weathered, in a sense, is part of the City and Guild's home team, um, a member of the City and Guild's council, but importantly for this role, has spent the last 35 years as an official prison visitor at Wormwood Scrubs and is absolutely passionate about this subject and will add um, a huge level of knowledge and experience to the Commissioner's work. Rasheen Curry um, works within Greg's as um, Retail Operations and People Director, a very senior position, but importantly, aside to being a trustee of the Greg's Foundation, is also chair of the Employers Forum for Reducing Reoffending and has a huge um, uh, experience bank to draw on. James Timpson OBE will I'm sure be known to you if you read the papers. Uh, Timpson's have for a long time championed the responsibility of business to reach out and create pathways for people who have lived experience within proper jobs. At the moment somewhere in the region of 10% of all employees across the Timpson network of shops and businesses have uh, come from the prison estate and our ex-offenders and James Timpson is thrilled to be involved as a commissioner uh, and has a lot to say on this matter. And finally, Mark Morbury, Chief Executive Unlimited. Unlimited, of course, uh, their role to identify and support social entrepreneurs. But aside to Unlimited's interest, Mark draws on decades of experience in the third sector and again, we feel adds huge depth and experience to our commissioners. So this group, uh, to be clear, are the people who will be assessing the um, fund and will be making key decisions about where distributions of funding will go. And they ask difficult questions of you as the process continues. So <clears throat> what are commissioners looking for? Key thing to start is one, in a, it's got to be innovative. So we're looking for great ideas that perhaps more traditional funders might have overlooked. Perhaps the sort of ideas that you know could work, but live on a shelf and you haven't found a place to show them off or to showcase them. We and the commissioners 
want to hear what they are. Um, practical. Realistically, you know, we want your ideas to be hugely innovative but, and ambitious, but on the surface, are they realistic? Can they actually cut through all the baggage and all the issues that we know um, dominate in the prison sector? Collaborative. This has come up again and again in our initial conversations with all the commissioners, and it's a theme for the sector that's, that's good and isn't going to go away. So commissioners are keen to foster collaboration within the sector and would be very open to joint bids or new ideas of organisations that we all probably know that are keen to work together and collaborate. So be mindful of that. Pan prison. The prison estate is wide and varied and the commissioners will be looking for ideas that can scale across the estate. So not the niche for one prison, but ideas that have the potential to work across the prison system. And finally, point five, um, a much overquoted subject, but systemic. So are there ideas that you have that could foster major systems change and could deliver change for the long term across the sector? And what are those challenges? Well, for us, obviously, they're things like ongoing and probably persistent budget pressure, the issues that we see around overcrowding, the repetitive movement of prisoners so that when they are on a skills journey, it's disjointed, fragmented, frustrating. What could we be doing to help smooth those journeys and allow people who want to leave the prison system to leave by developing and fostering proper skills that can get them proper jobs on the lease. Obviously there are issues around drugs, gangs and violence, but we want to focus on how skills and development of skills within or through the gates can help people get into jobs. But be mindful that these are system challenges. Lack of technology has come up again and again, or the access to technology. Are there ideas around that? And finally for us, around the chaotic release regime, so what can be done to enhance the way um, people leaving the prison system leave and then through the gates what support can be given to help facilitate the journey into a job. Finally there's a note at the bottom, commissioners have a specific interest in land based projects, specifically those relating to farming, heritage skills, the environment and the rural economy and just to reiterate these are around skills pathways into jobs in the rural economy. So that's what the commissioners are looking for. Um, hopefully we've given you an overview of what the fund is about, the process and systems. And to reiterate, on the website, you'll find a relatively detailed FAQs list, which should give you further insight. So, in the, in the spirit of allowing time for your questions, we are keeping our presentation short and will now take any questions that you have. Again, on the right hand bar, you should be able to see a questions tab. Any questions that you post now or in the next um, half an hour, we will answer. If for any reason it comes to you later, don't hesitate to get in touch. Through, um, through, the, through the website and we can answer them personally at a later date. Great, so we've had a few questions come through already, so thank you for that. Um, the first one is about the application deadline for the second phase. Um, so there's been a question about whether that is on the 31st, which is when we're actually going to be saying shortlisting. So uh, um, I'll hand over to Mark to kind of cover up the timeline. So the the uh, second stage of applications will be uh, a much more collaborative affair and we'll be able to spend a bit more time with um, those organisations that have been shortlisted and we'll have a month window to collectively get that uh, application uh, into shape for the Commissioner's uh, consideration and currently that window will close on the 28th of February. Thank you, hope that helps any follow-ups then let us know. 
Um, and I'll just kind of speed through the questions so far and then we can go back and cover up anything missing. Um, we've got a question here about whether we will be funding work in private prisons at all. I think the only thing to say about funding work in private prisons is that, uh, as Steve touched upon, the commissioners are interested in seeing things, that, uh, you know, projects that are replicable and can be scaled. So if uh, they're the kind of programmes that could only conceivably be delivered in private prisons, that might count against uh, against you in the you know, considerations, but not 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 not, not against it in principle. Great. Okay. So we've got a question here about heritage skills. So what do we what do we class as heritage skills? So maybe we could provide some specific examples. Heritage skills could cover all kinds of uh, uh, rural and agricultural skills from the past. So anything from dry stone walling to patching, uh, anything that is a is a is a, is a long term old craft. Indeed. And I would only add to that. This is about recovered systems about trying to find routes for the many not very niche jobs for the few so although we're interested in heritage skills they need to be skills that are transferable and that you know, as i say the many could approach and could find enduring and, and sustainable paid work in um, rather than something that was perhaps of the past and niche so you know, be mindful that this is for the many, not the few. Great. Um, we've got a question here about the expression of interest form. So whereabouts on the form should people inform how much they're going to be applying for? So which kind of portion of the form do they need to kind of clarify that? If, if you could include that in the about your project section uh, under the uh, brief project description, which is the first section, that would be great. And just to be clear, those projects from the expression of interest that are selected by commissioners to go forward to the second stage would then obviously be required to prepare a detailed budget, a detailed timeline, and a, a more detailed project overview. But yeah, if you can include it in that first half, that would be great. Great. Um, powering through these. Is there a specific age range this can relate to, or is it, does it have to be available to all? It's available to all, all, all age groups, but again, we're looking for things that potentially have a scale of applicability, so yeah, not, you, not too niche. But you, you can, if you've got a idea that relates to a sort of certain portion, say 19 to 25 year olds, you can put an application for that, can't you? Absolutely, yes. yeah, absolutely. Great. Um, can one provider submit more than one project application? Yeah, there's no, no reason not to. And we've also had a question from uh, some uh, applicants already about whether they can be part of a bigger bid and also submit their own, and that's, of course, absolutely fine. Uh, as the name suggests, we're just interested in getting good ideas through the door. Great. Is there a requirement for the funded work to include a City and Guilds accredited course? Um, I think I can answer that. No, no, absolutely no requirement. Um, who will be attending the visits is a question that we've come to. Who will be attending the visits? Is that, did we, I'm not sure whether there's visits. I don't, I don't think we've got that far yeah. with the working out how we're going to, once the commissioners have made their recommendations about the, the the project there will then be a process of you know due diligence and I, that could they could include visits but that hasn't yet been you know tied down yeah. Yeah. yeah i mean visits are possible if it was you know if the commissioners were trying to understand the granular detail of the project and it was critical to see yeah. that on the ground to make it work and, and to be understood but at the expression of interest stage really is a kind of question of, of, of completing the form and bringing the project to life. Great. Um, we've got a question that I'm going to be asking to clarify whether all of the skills training needs to be done inside prison or is it also able to be undertaken as part of through the gate support? Absolutely, it can be part of through the gate support and indeed you know, continued through into the community. 
can, can I add to that, Mark? I just I think the key thing that we really want to make sure that we see is that there is some link into getting into employment. So it can't just be about a training initiative as, as such. It's got there has got to be that direct link into getting into and, and sustained employment. Great. Um, first question here: Could self-employment projects be funded? Yes, I think so. Yeah, yeah definitely. Great, it'd be great to hear more about that application and any questions, just let us know. Um, where the website says an aligned programme of work, what does that refer to? Where, where about, where no, about that? Sorry, we'll just um, look through the, um, the website and, and check exactly where it is that it, it says that. <laughs> Um, in, in, come back. Come back yeah, we'll come back to it. In the meantime, um, the next question is about whether you need to have an existing relationship with City and Guilds to apply, um, and do the City and Guilds need to be the water body? Again, absolutely not. Ditch. We just get the. I found it. Uh, we, we found the where it says on the website um, about the aligned program of work thing. In fact, hold on, maybe we have an it's a false alarm. Um, <laughs> okay, so will the sifting through be quite harsh? So if you get through the expression of interest stage, are you in with a realistic chance at that point? We, we expect um, to receive quite a number of expressions of interest and the commissioners are excited to review them alongside colleagues from City and Guilds. Um, we are not then expecting to put a huge number through to the second stage. So there will need to be, your word harsh, but a, a focused review, really as much as anything else, to avoid waste and avoid a huge number of applicants filling out um, a detailed second stage form, if realistically, perhaps only five to ten Grants are in the end agreed and made. So yes, uh, if that's if, if harsh is the word, then then yes. But I think focused is, is really that the commission will want to make sure that we focus in on the projects that have the highest chance of achieving the state's mission, and that will mean that quite a lot of applicants um, don't make it through to the second stage. I think it's also worth adding there, Steve, that there has been no decision about how many grants will be uh, made. Yeah. So, you know, you say it could be five to ten, but it might not be that. We don't know. We are we are just going to put forward the ones or the ones, you know, there will be a short list, and then we don't know how many will be made. So we don't want anyone to be under any illusion about any decisions already having been made, because it hasn't, it's not working like that. Absolutely. And it's absolutely the first time we've done this. So. Absolutely, yeah. Um, so, can we unpack a little more about the land-based interest, which is that they've identified as a clear area of employee shortage, but maybe less relevant to urban-based prisons? So, do we are we able to give more of an idea about how significant or important it is to the commissioners that that land-based element is covered in the application? So, so applications that don't include a land-based uh, element will not be. Excluded. In fact, we'll, the commissioners are very keen to see both types of application. Uh, the foundation has a focus on both the urban and rural economy, uh, and so the sort of focus on that within the website and indeed the materials is just to reiterate and make sure that that applicants are considering uh, environments that aren't necessarily city or town based. Great. Thank you. Um, how long potentially could a funded initiative run for? What do we have an idea of what our ideal time scale would be for a project to run? All the projects would fit within the wider City and Guilds evaluation process and framework and theory of change. For this initiative, the commissioners have talked about wanting to see impact and therefore understand how change could be achieved in a realistic time frame. What 
that means is probably the project that will go through might be delivering some real evidence within a year, 18 months time, time frame. If your project is something that won't deliver evidence for many years, it's unlikely to be put through to the second stage. So they're looking for impact that can be evidenced and then hopefully coded and replicated through method in a realistic time frame. So perhaps within a year or 18 months, evidence can be understood and appraised. Great, Kate, that helps. Um, does archaeology count within heritage girls? Potentially. Yes. Yeah. Potentially, yes. I think the whole, it does rather depend on the whole, you know, the context of that, but I don't see why not. Yeah, definitely sounds very interesting. Um, do we require a full breakdown of costs required? We, we, we will do the next, um, uh, the next zebra crossing, as it were. Um, where we'll, you know, where we'll be putting full applications together and assessing uh, the needs. So, it, bear in mind that if you go through to the next round, you will need to um, submit a full budget. Brilliant. Um, so, there's a question here about the collaborative element, which we've mentioned how important it is. So, would the foundation see collaborative funding with another funder a positive or negative? So that's kind of part one yeah. of the question. The second part is what's the maximum amount we can request from C and G? Um, Mark, do you want to? So the, the first part, the, the foundation has always been very keen to collaborate with other uh, funders, uh, and I think that would possibly even strengthen the application. Um, in terms of the sum, you know, we we deliberately not set a target because we don't want uh, to encourage people just to apply for a, a fixed arbitrary sum, uh, but rather think about what they're program needs. I suppose, you know, given the size of the fund, it's unlikely that if you apply for a million pounds, unless it's a brilliant idea, uh, um, that you'll get you know, the full sum. Uh, but equally, I could see the commissioners making some smaller grants and some, some larger grants. We, we appreciated coming into the webinar that this would be something of an elephant in the room, but hopefully that gives you a bit more of a sense. So clearly, if you apply for a million it's unlikely to be um, put forward, but equally, you know, we're interested to see the breadth of applications that come through at this stage. Brilliant. Um, uh, there's a question which Stuart answered about whether an EOI has already been submitted and can it be amended before the closing date for everybody's benefit? Yes, it can be amended using your unique link. And if you need to remind of your link, just ask us. Right, so there seems to be a strong emphasis on skills. To what extent might the commissioners be interested in projects that are more life skill related? I think the commissioners are interested in, in all kinds of skills, including life skills. Uh, but as Sally says, so long as they relate to uh, the movement towards and into employment. Great. Um, when we say that it needs to be replicable, what the um, inquirer's understanding from this is that it needs to be scalable and affordable and something that could potentially continue to be funded beyond the project through something like the BPF. Is that, is that a correct understanding? Yes, and I think uh, anything, anything that's funded by the commissioners is likely to be something that in the future could be funded at scale uh, from other sources. Yeah, the key, I think the key point is, can it be coded and replicated across a large proportion of the prison estate? If, if it only works in a very niche or, or finite environment, again, you know, the commissions probably won't be open-minded. And again, remember who they are. They're, they've all worked in, in different aspects of the criminal justice sector and, and across multiple prisons, I think. Dave Sally, for example, visited dozens and dozens of prisons, spoke to over 150 people to, to write her unlocking potential report. They have um, a broad view of the space and will be looking for solutions, systemic solutions, ideally, that speak to the, to the whole rather than to just one aspect of the subject. Great. Um, can a project be gender specific? 
So, for example, a possible female prison estate. And then that relates to another question, which is can it include young offenders? So it's, it's two separate and targeted audiences. Yes, to both. Great. Um, can we advise when the funds will be released after people are informed as to whether they will receive an award in April to help them plan for project implementation? I think I think applicants who make it through to the second stage will be given detailed guidance around that when we know more. Clearly, it will depend highly on the very specific nature of that applicant and the specific project, um, and you know, will be given guidance in that process, um, particularly around funding and when release of the funding will be possible. Great. Question here about the evaluation element. So, what scale of evaluation are we looking for? Um, would we fund an external evaluator or university? to research and or publish evaluation? I suppose it would depend on whether it was proportionate to the size of the grant. You know, if, if you were asking for uh, £10,000 for programme activity and £30,000 to fund a uh, university researcher, I can imagine the commissioners probably uh, wouldn't go for that. I mean, the evidence is very important to the foundation. The foundation had its own uh, Impact and Evaluation Framework, which was delivered, uh, or developed, sorry, by uh, Cranfield University, uh, and for this kind of project has uh, outcome measures that are fairly uh, straightforward around skills developed, uh, in those into employment uh, and sustained employment, uh, improved earnings potential and well-being uh, uh, and uh, uh, confidence. So those are the kind of outcomes measures that the fund will apply to Grants. That's not to say that it wouldn't make a grant to an organisation that couldn't necessarily measure against all of those activities, but probably the, the commissioners are more likely to fund something in that state. We can follow up with those details um, after the after the webinar. Um, question: Is match funding required? No, no. But if if you have um, an aligned funder who could match fund and therefore amplify or, or deliver a bigger project to, as a result, then you know all of our commissioners live in the real world and know how hard funding can be to find and can, I'm sure, would appreciate seeing further funding um, enter the sector and, and, and support really great ideas. Please include any details if you have some secure match funding that could be relevant. Great. If successful applicants are announced at the end of April, when would we expect projects to start? Again, I think this is dependent on uh, the, the individual uh, applications. Uh, obviously, we'd like to see programmes start uh, relatively quickly afterwards, but if there are good reasons for uh, that delivery happening later in the year, uh, we're certainly open to listening, listening to those. Um, in the expression of interest form, we ask people to clarify whether they have an existing relationship with the Chain Guilds group, its brands or offices. The question is, does this need to be yes? No, no. Uh, okay. I think we just included that for general awareness. Yeah, it's just important that we understand any, any relationship or dependency. It will not count for you and it will not count against you. We just want to be clear so that we're fair to all applicants. Perfect. Okay. Does the project need to be entirely new or could it be an application that seeks to build or scale something that is already in operation but on a small scale? Yes. Uh, so, so long as the, you know, the, program, the funding is enabling you to do something uh, new that you wouldn't otherwise be able to do, uh, the thing that we suspect commissioners won't fund is replacement of existing activity or small increments of uh, existing delivery. But if you do have something where you've got evidence that it's worked well and it's likely to lead someone into a job, then that's exactly what we'd be looking to receive. Um, will stage two be a competitive process? It's not in that the not in that the commissioners have decided they're going to fund three of however many applications uh, progress, uh, but only to the extent that there is a limit on the funds. Uh, and 
so obviously the commissioners can't fund above that minimum penalty mark. The, the commissioners have set aside a substantial amount of time to make sure that they take their role very seriously and, and give the second stage and the, and the expressions of interest the, the time and, and thought they deserve and you know are looking forward to having a vigorous uh, discussion and a heartfelt debate so that they make the right decisions. That, that's our expectation. And it's probably worth saying that the foundation team's role in that is you know, working with those that are progressed to make that decision as difficult as possible. Uh, so there'll be support in developing the application and uh, thinking about what's included. We've got a couple of questions about the evaluation framework, a couple from before yeah. you, if you updated Mark and the theory of change and whether they're on our website. They are not currently on our website, but no, we, we, we can share them with this and actually we should fill out them to the yeah, we will add them to the website and we will share follow-up details on them, so you should have that. And if you've got any questions after you look at them in more detail, then we're here to answer them. Um, so, what is the time scale between decision date 28th of February to awarding the grant? April 1st start date is the question. I'm not sure whether we may have already answered that. I think we have. Yeah. Um, how many grants will be awarded? Again, I think we've possibly already answered that. In that we're, we're not sure yeah. yet, but it could be multiple. Um, uh, just another. When submitting a full budget, would that be for one prison alone? It's, it's for the full amount of funding that you're requesting, I yeah. understand. Yeah. Okay, if there are several really great ideas, might the fund amount be increased? So th I think this comes back to uh, the earlier question about uh, the website content, uh, which included this sentence, commissioners will use the big idea fund and an aligned programme of work to support projects. So uh, I suppose the big idea fund is the first act of the commission uh, and uh, there may be other things the commission does in the future to help it deliver that mission about uh, uh, finding and activating new mechanisms for getting uh, uh, people into jobs, members into jobs. I think it might be worth adding that this, the Big Idea Fund and the Commission has the full support of the trustees and, and the governments of City and Guilds Group who are very excited about it. So to answer the question, you know, is more money available? Well, it's not my money, but all we can say is they were very positive and are looking forward to seeing what is submitted and what comes what comes through. Um, question about how the funding will be drawn down, so will it be in time periods based on the specific activities? So traditionally the foundation has paid grants uh, in advance, so rather than uh, on result, uh, but uh, split by you know, way marks throughout the grant period. So it depends slightly on the length of the programme uh, and the proposed sum, but typically uh, be a reporting cycle uh, and release of the next round of funds in advance. Which might be a quarterly or six monthly process. I think overall what um, the fund is trying to do and the City and Guilds Group more widely is trying to be pragmatic and sensible. So we would work with any um, successful um, funding partner to make sure it was the right thing for that partner and the project and we're not dogmatic. Uh, in the way we would approach that. So we're, we'd be open-minded, uh, pragmatic, and make sure that it, it works and the project had every chance of the highest level of social impact and success. Great. Um, a couple of questions about whether you have to have a relationship and agreement in place with the prison already. I think that would probably come out at the second stage application process. Um, clearly the commissioners want to support projects with high conviction and if we were to propose projects that when a due diligence was undertaken then had significant pressure points or had a risk that they couldn't even be delivered, that, that would be, you know, that would be a, a, an obstacle and a challenge. So clearly we're looking for applications that have the chance of having a high level of impact that will work and that can be scaled. And it really is, it's, it's the applicant's role to tease out 
some of these factors at the expression of interest phase and not put forward projects that um, are nice ideas but have too many risk factors attached to them at, at the early stage. Great. Um, I think we've actually come to the end of the questions submitted so far. I know we've got another one from you, thank you. Um, is the funding solely available for prison-based projects or could this be used to work with probation services for those who have just been released or are due to be? Uh, absolutely. Um, anything through the gates with the probation service, as long as it's focused on skills and routes and pathways into, into real and rewarding jobs. So yes. Great. Um, how susceptible is the fund to changes at national government policy level and or Brexit? Thankfully neither. Um, it's refreshingly uh, not uh, held to ransom by government and for once Brexit has no bearing on it. Great. So that's questions. I'll just wait for other ones to come through and I'll go back up and just check that we've covered everything. I don't know if there's, if there's any questions that come to me, time, please just send them in or if there's anything that you, you guys in the room or Kevin feel that we haven't answered, then um, just go for it. Kevin, this is your opportunity. <laughs> if, if you want to add anything to um, what we've said in the room, please do. If not, stay quiet. Uh, hi, everybody. I've sat here really quietly. Um, I just think this is really good that the foundation's first outing are going to look specifically at, at the justice sector. You know, we've, we've worked for many years around education, you know, reducing reoffending. We've, we've tried a lot around getting technology into prisons. And this is not just a city and guilds project. It's something that goes across the whole city and guilds group. So it's not just about what we do at city and guilds. We've got other parts of the group that are, that are, that are, that are that are really behind this and everybody within the group is behind it so it's just for me really exciting and i just look forward to some really good innovative ideas and as, as we've all heard it's around it's around employment or at least getting people one step closer to employment because that's the one thing that we know makes a massive difference to people not going back to prison and it's something that really does you know make an impact to, to individuals so i could talk all day but i know we've only got about 20 minutes left so I'll probably yeah. just stop now. <laughs> Great. Well, th thanks for the filling, filling the time, Kevin. That was useful because we've got another question, which is, is there a guideline for the length of answers we'd like to receive in the EOI? I think yeah, there's potentially sure. guidance. Yeah. As well. Within the form, there is a, there's a word in it about the box called uh, below the boxes. Uh, yeah, just below the boxes, it will give you a sense of how the words you can use against the word limits. I mean, the idea at this point is to keep it uh, short to avoid uh, creating lots of work where but I appreciate that that can be a challenge as well to keep it short but you know, if you can set it out in simple English using bullets etc to to set out your points um, and say it in as few words as possible such that if you were reading it it, it makes it makes perfect sense but appreciate that's a challenge but it's been it's been intended to try and help um, reduce um, all of our applicants um, producing reams of, of, of application at the current state. Great. Um, people would be interested in working with a lead bidder or consort in a, or in a consortium arrangement. Is there a facility to introduce potential partners to each other? That's an interesting question. I think one of the potential options when we're, once uh, the expressions of interest are reviewed, if there are aligned fields uh, to, do, to do that. Uh, so if you are a project that, uh, looking for a lead bidder, uh, but maybe don't want to bid as the, as the sole uh, organisation, if you submit an expression of interest in the kind of things that you're interested in, and uh, if there's a company like that. Great. I mean, I think we are looking, we'd be very keen to see joint applications. So, you know, we're looking for collaboration where we can, and we will, if we see things that we think align well, then we will be yeah. able to create. Yeah, and facilitate interactions yeah, exactly. where it yeah. potentially makes sense. And if you have a specific thought about
about someone you'd love to collaborate with yes. and, and haven't been successful in reaching out to them, then you know, get in touch with us yeah. and we can perhaps join the dots behind yeah. the scene. I think one of the things that we've all recognised is that it, where, where organisations are working together, there's a greater likelihood of increasing impact and after all that is what we're trying to achieve. So we are very, very much looking to wherever we can facilitate collaborative working in the whole sector. Yeah, so definitely um, follow up please. Um, just the only other question about reminding people of their links which we can we can sort out where relevant so you can give back into applications. Um, any more questions? I think I've answered well we we've, we've mentioned all of the ones that come through. Oh no we've got another one. Um, if we're working in a, part, in a partnership with a larger education provider, would we fund their staff costs and project management of the project? I think you've got to think about whether the thing that you're asking for funding for is appealing to the commissioners. Uh, so staff costs, absolutely, everyone realises there's a cost of delivering uh, programmes. Overheads equally, everyone like that understands that. Uh, if large uh, portions of the grant uh, income that you're seeking go to a, uh, a third party, uh, you just need to be prepared to explain that and uh, yeah. for it to be assessed, I suppose. The, the kind of clarifying point um, this ask is mentioned is, is, for example, their time to set up the projects in prison. So I yeah, absolutely, absolutely, yeah. yeah. I think, as um, Steve mentioned it earlier, what we're not looking to do is to in replace funding that's already there in another source. So that hopefully that's clear. Um, great. I think that's everything. We want to give it a couple more minutes just in case because we've got probably about 13 minutes left theoretically, but wrap up early. Um, I think probably if the questions look like they've paused for now, we'll we'll end now. What I would say though is that if anybody wants to have another conversation or a conversation if you haven't already with us about your registration of interest, you know, or, or your ideas, please do get in touch. We're more than happy to have one-to-one -one conversations. So this isn't the only opportunity for your questions to be answered or to have a conversation. So, you know, please do get in touch. Yeah. And we'll follow up with the recording of the webinar and the details of the evaluation framework um, as it's going. So thank you very much. Thank you very much for your time and for your interest in this. And we really look forward to seeing um, your registrations come in. Thank you very much. <laughs>